Salaam, Namaste, Sashriyakal. Welcome to the JKTV's uh, program, Crossing the Lines, new episode. Today, our guest is uh, Professor Ashok Swain, who's a peace and conflict researcher in Uppsala University. And happened to be, he was, uh, we managed to, uh, to take his interview uh, after his lecture in Lund University. And his lecture uh, was climate change and the river dispute in South Asia. Uh, that is, that's a whole uh, uh, lecture is available on uh, our JKTV's uh, website and in a Facebook page. So uh, thank you very much, Professor Top. Uh, the first question I want to ask you as a professor of peace and conflict, other way around, and how the Kashmiri is getting freedom from India and Pakistan. But uh, my question is how, I mean, how the Indian and Pakistanis can get actually freedom from the Kashmir conflict. That an independent of Kashmir issue of looking at the relationship between India and Pakistan. I think Indians and Pakistans have always and have been for the last more than 70 years have been looking at the Kashmir issue uh, or have been looking at their bilateral issue in the Kashmir uh, lens. Uh, so they need to find a way how to deal with uh, other issues rather than looking at Kashmir issue. Uh, I think if you if you look, uh, the Chinese had a very interesting uh, um, idea before. You don't really bring in the main problem to talk first. You bring that one the last, and that's a, that's a very smart idea. They did it. Even they have done with India. Even they started talking with India for many years, even before bringing the border issue into account. And if India and China can push that kind of process, uh, keeping the most problematic issue out for some time and discuss other areas where they can mutually work together, that probably India and Pakistan need to do. But the unfortunately, both countries, India and Pakistan, have been, even if they decide to talk about something, it's either Kashmir or terrorism, which uh, it comes in. Indians don't want to talk to Kashmir, but they bring in terrorism. I mean, these are the things which comes in. So I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a I find it, there is a, both countries do have a very strong institutional interest or selfish interest by a powerful groups in both the countries, those who really don't want to do that. So it doesn't mean that, that there is no possibility of not doing it. How do you think about the Michelle's four points formula? I think uh, we always try to see things more problematic than what it is, or we find it much more, we, we have to tend to look at always the bad side than the good side of it. Um, of course, still the Indian election um, in 2019, uh, early 2019, very little possibility of things improving further. Uh, but after, if I mean, if there will be a change of government or not change of a government in Indian side, it depends on what will happen. But I think even if there is a, not a change of government, the Hawk, present Hawkish government, with probably might able to make another uh, um, um, possibility or another uh, take another chance of of doing um, uh, a, starting a talk. Uh, and uh, considering what uh, the Imran Khan, I mean Imran Khan possibility with also with the consent of the, uh, the forces behind uh, the government in Pakistan, uh, including military, uh, probably they do have the consent for it. So if the present government in India goes away, we might get another government uh, from the I'm not so sure what will happen because depending on the kind of constellation of the government who comes in, uh, but if that government will also try to make things better. Uh, so in both the cases, there is certain hope that it might get a different perspective in, in, in a few months' time. But I'm not also uh, ruling out a much more tense relationship before the elections. Because uh, if you look at the Indian situation now, it is always 
for the party in power to gain the more strength or to gain more political support it th i think it has a uh, it has a willingness to make the situation more tense with pakistan they of course don't want to create a all out conflict but you never know when you start that kind of process where when and how to stop it because it goes out out of your control how to take these things the musharraf focus on use of musharraf formula was nothing new it was there before from the discussions were there before uh, so there is a group which have been talking before and the group is talking now um, of course there is a change now which you might have noticed that uh, the pakistan doesn't have a nsa uh, and uh, if pakistan doesn't have a nsa indian um, government the nsa is the most powerful the foreign minister doesn't have a much power uh, so the last talk which got cancelled in some way i think indian nsa wanted to put his uh, foot on the ground so to keep the foreign minister out of the context so that was took place so uh, it's, it's it's a it's a difficult situation and uh, that's for sure but i don't i'm not completely uh, i have not lost com hope completely it might something improve if both the countries can manage the relation trips it much bit more civilized way till the election is over thank you very much professor uh, which kind of measurement we need to take to go forward to get the peace in kashmir and stop the bloodshed in kashmir who will take the first initiative is kashmiris india pakistan or all together i think the, there is a, there is a lot, there is a first of all uh, the discourse in both the countries um, uh, there is a government sponsored particularly in india there is a huge anti pakistan rhetorics going on for some years uh, this doesn't make comfortable for any government to take any kind of um, steps which will look like probably you are um, uh, trying to uh, what you call it uh, giving up or uh, trying to make compromises too much so i think it's a immediate thing is that if the both the countries and particularly indian side because pakistan side try to play particularly after the election try to play certain role that not to make it too uh, but now they have come back because the, when the indian side started uh, uh, cancelling the talk but i think the real challenge lies how the indian leadership try to m keep the situation calm not to make the public discourse that bitter that vit vitriolic uh, that conflictual all the time after doing that i think it is unless there is a, a discussion the meeting between two leaders that is very important you can't ha you can have a hundred soft talk between nsa between uh, i mean track 2 is not much of a help so even if the nsa or the foreign minister talks doesn't take you much unless there is a, the leaders those who have the in the power to change it to do it uh, india also should find ways of taking into account uh, the who are actually powers in the pakistan uh, not only you know india should give up it's a uh, possible only talking to the government india should also find ways of talking to the military which is a major power force in the pakistan side i think there are different steps but the steps first has to calm down the rhetoric uh, put some process of uh, um, dialogue on kashmir which to make because kashmir is situation is out of hand in the indian side because uh, the way kashmir situation has been played on and has been being being played on by indian uh, government for its own political interest that is Kashmir is going back to the uh, 1990s uh, when the Kashmir was that situation. So I think when the Indian central government was losing its uh, in the Kashmir side or the Indian controlled Kashmir side, uh, they need to first start a dialogue process, keep the Kashmir situation not going um, the way it is going, start the dialogue, start the public discourse on India, Pakistan, uh, much more civilized and a dialogue between the two leaders and bring the military in. Thank you very much, Professor, for your kind time. And I hope to see you uh, some other interviews again. Thank you very much.